Hey, I gotta get that clap in every time. Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome back to another Sprinkler Supply Store product overview. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy. And what we're gonna do in this video is answer two questions. Number one, I wanna show you the Hunter Mini Click Rain Sensor because it's an old standby, very reliable and inexpensive rain sensor. But as you can see with this one, I want to also explain what NO is or a normally open rain sensor because that is not typical. And if you order this particular rain sensor, it's very likely it may not work on your system because most irrigation controllers are normally closed. So in this video, I wanna talk about the sensor and what is the difference between a normally open rain sensor and a normally closed. So in order to do that, uh, I have a controller that's right down here on the desk. It's a Weathermatic Smart Line that we'll use for demonstration. But let's go ahead first and take the Mini Click out of the packaging. Uh, the, the Mini Click, this is the wired version. So you're gonna wire it directly to the controller. It doesn't require batteries. It is basically a circuit interrupter. So we're gonna touch on that in a minute. All this is doing is opening or closing a circuit and in this case because this model is normally open it means it's going to close a circuit and when it closes a circuit that will trigger the rain event on the controller so let's unwrap this uh nest nest of of wires um and then take a look at the at the mini click you can mount this part of it on the side of a building, on the back of a mailbox. Well, maybe not a mailbox because this is the wired version on the side of your house, side of your garage, etc. Make sure that the receiving part or the rain sensor portion of it is open to the sky. We see so many times that this is installed under an overhang, under a tree, uh, or even next to the eave where water drips off and goes right in, which I guess that's fine because you want it to shut off, but you really want it to be open to the sky so it can receive actual rainfall when it is raining. So the other thing I wanted to do is to take off the cap carefully. I'm going to just remove it there. And then let's look at this for a minute. So you, it's a kind of, I like knowing how stuff works. So if you look at this, it has what are known as cork discs. And this is about as old school technology as, as you can find. So what happens is these discs, when wet, swell up and uh, trigger, trigger the circuit. So if you look down actually in, inside here, there's a kind of like a button and can't fit my finger down in there, but when that button is pressed, that's essentially uh, opening or closing the circuit. And that's what these cork discs do. So let's go ahead and put the cap oop, back on. And then I wanna point out the rain thresholds. Let's see if the camera can see that. You have, there we go, uh, one eighth and a half inch on that side. And then over here you have one quarter and three quarters. So it goes from one eighth inch of rainfall up to three quarters. So if we had this set here, oops, that would be set for a one eighth inch rain event. So if it rains one eighth of an inch, the cork discs will swell up and interrupt the circuit. So that's completely uh, user programmable or user, you can set that yourself. So if you feel like it is uh, coming on too quickly. You can climb up the ladder and make, make this adjustment. Also note, if you wanna test the sensor, you can simply put your finger on the top of the spindle, press down, and you'll hear that click. Hear that click? That is the button being pressed manually, and that's what the cork discs do, okay? On the other side, the other end of the wire, you will have two wires, just basically like a speaker wire. And uh, this one's been already installed before. And uh, you're not gonna see that. So it's just two wires and there's no polarity. You can put either wire on either port because it's just a closed loop circuit. So now let's, let me show you what this looks like inside of a controller, keeping in mind that this video is the normally open sensor, okay? And what normally open means is that this is the normal state. Two wires, open, 
that's what the controller thinks is, is normal behavior. If the circuit closes like this in the controller, now the controller is gonna think there's a rain event happening and it will shut down. So that's really what I want you to know is the purpose of the rain sensor is either to open or close a circuit and that is it. Okay, so now let me flip the camera around and we're gonna take a look at, at a controller as an example. Let me get this stuff out of the way. So this happens to be a Weathermatic controller because it's what we had just handy and available. Okay, let's open it up. Then let's open the face panel so we can get under the hood, so to speak. And you know what? I'm actually gonna remove the face panel so we can see the terminal a little bit easier. Again, this on the Weathermatic Smart Line, the face panel can come right off. That can do that with a lot of controllers as well. And then what I wanna point out is this uh, sensor terminal. You know what, let me see if I can just hold this up so you can see it better. And I'm gonna get a pen to point out right here, S-E-N, S-E-N, that is the sensor terminal. And what you can notice on this particular controller is that there is a wire jumper already in there. So what that tells you is that this controller is normally closed because this circuit is connected. This is a normally closed controller. In, in today's uh, market, I think almost every uh, sensor terminal on a controller is normally closed. So what happens is if I were to remove this jumper, now the controller is in rain sensor pause. Okay, there doesn't even have to be a rain sensor hooked up. If you remove the jumper wire, from any irrigation controller, it will automatically go into rain pause. And so this is a, by looking at this, you'll automatically know because it's normally closed, that wireless or that rain sensor we were just talking about won't work for this controller because it is a normally open rain sensor. And so those are really only used for older model controllers that had normally open circuits when this one is a normally closed. So if you're watching this video because you're not sure if you have a normally open or normally closed um, rain sensor terminal, just open your controller and look and see if there's a jumper wire in there. And that will tell you if it's normally closed or normally open. And then when you go to purchase your wire, your rain sensor, look for one that's either normally open or normally closed. Again, this will all be noted in the particular instruction manual of the controller that you have. But it's a concept that once you sort of understand normally open versus normally closed, it can also help with the troubleshooting. Um, because if you feel like your controller is stuck in, let's say rain pause, it might be, um, it might be that for some reason you have a, a, a cut on your wire. So even though the rain sensor is closed, maybe the wire has been cut on one side and so the circuit is still open and it's in continuous rain pause. So those are just a couple things to keep in mind. Again, these rain sensors, these mini clips have been around for a long time. They're, they're proven, they're reliable. The only disadvantage is you have to wire it. So if your controller is in your basement, or your controller is inside and you don't want to drill another hole or run a wire to the outside, it could be more advantageous to get a wireless rain sensor and then you can put the sensor basically wherever you want. So I hope that helps answer some questions about what is a normally open rain sensor and what is the difference between a normally open and a normally closed rain sensor. And if we can help you with any of your irrigation needs from drip to sprays to rotors to controllers. We're happy to help you and you can reach us by phone, chat, and email. And until the next Sprinkler Supply Store product overview, happy sprinkling, we'll talk to you then.